G'day, and uh, welcome to episode 9 of Big Blue. As you can see, something's changed. Um, I bought this bar off Facebook Marketplace for 30 bucks. Bloody steel. Um, reason I bought it, uh, I'm going to... I don't know whether I'm going to build or get someone to build a custom 5 post bull bar. Now, a lot of you will be going, Ew, why a 5 post? They don't look good on that. Is they're so unpractical. We're looking to move <laughs> again. So where we're moving to and the sort of driving I'll be doing, um, potentially a lot of kangaroos and a lot of stuff on the road. So just for my peace of mind, a little bit of protection for, for the car. So I'll put this on for the time being. I've sold all my other bull bars. Um, and yeah, this is on until I get that done. So nice and light, very cheap, as you can see. Um, and it can house my nine inch spotties that I've had in the shed for ages. So yes, that's, that's that bar and that's why so yeah I don't know if it's a stock bar but that's what it is so uh, let's get into fully mounting the bar I've literally just picked it up I've got two bolts holding it on uh, and we'll mount some spotties too so let's go right out, one's on Very nice um, just using one bolt I don't know if you can see it on there but yeah just using one bolt in the center mount of the mount using a bit of 243 to lock all the threads up Yep, and I'm trying to get it sort of, so this bracket is in line with this line on the bull bar and in line with this line. So they'll both be square and even hopefully. And then the lights, I've always found if you point them up ever so slightly, it's normally a pretty good um, like beam pattern sort of thing. So I've, I've had them flat in the past and then when I had the bigger lift in this, I've even had to point them down because they were shooting up in the air too much. Um, but yeah, this is sort of what I found. Just point them up that tiny little bit um, and then later on, if you really need to, you can adjust them. But yeah, that's that's what I found over the the few years I've been using spotlights. I always have them up just that little bit, get them that bit further. So yeah, let's get the other one sorted. There you go. It's all on. I just got to wire it all up. Um, I'm going to add some more bolts for the bull bar uh, and a tap because one of the mounts threads in the chassis uh, is all shagged. So I'll go and get a tap. Hopefully that fixes it. Otherwise, I'll have to something else out there not bad hopefully I can get a new bar built on the ASAP I don't mind the factory alloy but factory bar factory bar custom bar will be way cooler so good I don't know if you can see me very well I'm using me me interior light um, I've just been for a drive with the new spotties wired up and give them a test drive test run got the 42 inch Kings light bar on the roof and the nine inch lethal Kings uh, spotties. And I have to say that I am beyond impressed. These are the cheapest lights I've ever had on a car besides King seven inch spotties. I've had them before, but these like this combo, the cheapest set of lights I've ever had on a car. And they are, in my opinion, the brightest. Can see for kilometers in front of me with the light bar everything it's it's like daytime it's oh, i'll give it to you kings that's not i'm not normally a king's man but i i rate that that's pretty good for 150 bucks for the light the spotties i think the light bar was maybe 90 or 100 bucks yeah that's pretty bloody good I'm, I'm quite impressed i'm very keen to um go on a drive from home down towards new south wales three o'clock in the morning sort of thing so you get a good run out of them and and really see how they go um because in suburbia um i had to go for a bit of a drive out and find a dark road and and use them um but yeah no very happy so yeah very keen to keep using them and, and see how long they last that'll be the next thing how long they last if they take on water uh, and all that sort of stuff so yes yes one for kings never thought i'd say it but i recommend the king spotties so yeah right it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. We just got back from uh, shopping, getting stuff for dinner and, and, and that. Uh, came home to a delivery, which I'm very excited about. I finally got an air compressor. Now, I was looking at getting the Kings one because they're cheap. I was looking at getting an ARB portable one because it's ARB. Um, and then I stumbled across this, Dr. Air from, I think I got it from Outback Equipment. And I believe it was 250 bucks. Now it comes with a quick 
release as quick attach bloody <coughs> tire pumper up and engage comes with your power cable comes with hose and it came with spare filters and other little attachments for it the compressor itself stays in the box which i i love i'll quickly grab the camera and show you so yeah stays in the box not off beautiful i'm about to um put that back down no, that works i'm about to um plug her in and pump up the stand up paddleboard and see how that goes so very excited let's see how she goes right we've got compressor set up paddleboard here this is the little adapter i bought off ebay for 10 bucks so we'll see how it goes I think I mentioned earlier in one of the, my previous videos that I may have to move the tent back because <clears throat> it would fail in the shower awning. The shower awning is as far forward as it can go just with the way that it mounts. I've just set it all up and it's so close. It's literally a bee's dick. Like, I have to move the tent back like that much. But I'll, I'll move it back as far as I can just for clearance purposes. But yeah, it's so close. So yeah, now I get to play with the tent mounts again. <laughs> awesome. So now there, I've moved the tent. There's a good inch of space there, so I could come close if I want to, but I'll just leave it there like that. Looks pretty good. Just hanging over the back of the rack there. Doesn't hit anything. It's all beautiful. So, one job done. Um, I didn't film any of this, but I've just finished carpeting the 12 up lid slash hatch <clears throat> i went to bunnings and got some quick grip now i have used this before but i had no idea how to use it this time i read the instructions and you spray both bits of material that you want to stick together let them dry and go like tacky slap them together rub them out <laughs> rub it out yes rub it out so they're nice and schmick and like nice and stuck down um, i've stapled couple little staples around there as well and it seems to be sticking a hell of a lot better than the other stuff that I was using I can't even remember what it was um, but yeah it seems to be going well I've got the hinge on there whoop, and the little hole for the handle I'm about to go and mount these in there so that it sort of like rests on them if, if that makes sense so it like closes and hits that so it doesn't go into the hole sort of thing so yeah, I'll go and do that get this mounted um, and then I've got the battery on charge so I can slap that f the other little fridge in so I can see uh, how much the battery goes down overnight. At the moment, with both the centre console and the upright, it only drops to about 80%. So I'm hoping with another fridge, it only drops to like 75, maybe 70. Hopefully, wait and see. Just finished installing the 12 volt hatch. I'll quickly jump up and show you. I've just vacuumed everything too, so it's nice and clean. So there you have the hatch. Looks way better. Got your hinge. Lots of bloody screws. Um, little hole into your 12 volt. Bloody beautiful. Looks good. And then I've also... I think I mentioned earlier about having to open up one side of the fridge box. I bug it up. Those two are sort of out. Um, but yeah, I just did, drilled some holes there to 
the, the fan that's just on the other side suck air through these holes and then blow out the other end. Excuse me. Um, just a lot easier than trying to pull the whole fridge out because it's quite in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that 12 volt hatch looks way better. Very happy with how that's come up. So yeah, nice. Playing around with the back setup again, just finally getting onto adding a wing kit onto these drawers, these drawers. Uh, so I've just cut this out using the old King's drawers bloody timber. Uh, so that's the wheel arch, obviously. That's it. Uh, out cut out for the little speak there so it sits a bit flusher against the wall and all I'm going to do is have that in there I'll have a couple of little right angle brackets on that a bit of timber coming off that with more right angle brackets just for strength and then that'll just be flush with this so it'll just be flat draw all the way over to that I'll have a little bit of a cut out around that speaker as well just so it all sits sort of nice um, and then I won't have a like a blanking bit here it'll just be open so i can throw whatever i want right up in there so yeah it'll give me a bit more storage on there the dogs will be able to actually stand on it uh, and yeah so should be good and just like that so the rest of the king's timber cut out around the speaker all the way down bloody beautiful just got to carpet it and screw it all together and yeah like i said storage in there for whatever we want i've got um Spike ball still just shoved in there at the moment, just to give you an idea, but yeah, bloody cool, eh? Lots more room. Alright, uh, just been to Bunnings to grab more bits of angle, some more quick, quick grip to finish carpeting and finish installing this wing kit that I've got going. And we went to the op shop and I found this bloody bargain, eh? Some form of camera stand, so I'm going to strip this stuff off stick a bloody gopro mounty thing on there and i have a big ass gopro stand eh not bad for 20 bucks just given the quick sand and a quick coat of uh, paint <clears throat> i'll quickly show you what uh, the paint is that i use for painting all the timber and everything um, i use this squirts paint and prime Bonds to wood, metal, plastics, and more. So it's just a good sort of stick to anything sort of paint. <clears throat> and it seems to work really well. Um, so yeah, I'll just let that dry now and I'll uh, cover and carpet. Um, I've got to quickly install these just along, along there sort of thing so that um, it's just supported. So I'll, I'll be screwing into the drawers, I won't be screwing into the wing kit. So nice. There we go, one wing kit installed. Heaps of room in there for bloody storage of whatever the, that'll fit. Um, and it is also quite strong. I've got four angle brackets lining it. So plenty of uh, strength for the doggos to stand on it. Um, what else, what else? Doggos will stand on it, barbecue will be on it. It's just just nice just uses up that little bit of um space beside that drawer quite nicely so that's what i wanted to do i've uh, nailed it that sun's shocking yeah i've nailed it i reckon so can get out there and try it yeah. right so as you saw that compressor works well um i rate it as as of so far <clears throat> let a tire down to 20 pound pumped it back up took about four or five minutes so quite impressed with that quite happy with that um we'll see how the test of time goes <clears throat> now i've been back to full drive supercenter purchased an inverter remote switch just because where i've got it uh, mounted i can't get down in there to turn the button on so i'll mount a switch somewhere so i can turn it on remotely uh, and then i'll get into i'm going to make like a wing kit for this side as well um, to be able to mount some chargers and be able to have that as a dedicated charge zone so get into that Right, doing more carpentry work. Um, I've just come up with this infill panel beside the fridge there to mount this inverter switch and there'll be enough room to have another um, switch or two or whatever I want there eventually. I've also started building a wing kit for here. So, let's see if I can get a better view of that. Let's go in here. In there, like so. So that'll all be carpeted and I'm going to make it go 
follow the line of the thing here, so I'll have a down and then a cross fill on the, the drawers. So that'll be that'll be nice. I'll be able to have my charges and everything here. And it'll be sweet. So I finished cutting, everything's it's all sweet. Um I'll show you once it's installed where each bit goes. Um, but just carpeting using a quick grip again. Once again, spray it on both surfaces, let it go tacky, and then push it down and really get it on there. Uh, and now I just go around with a real sharp razor blade and trim up uh, the bits of overhang that I don't want. Like so. I'll get it right nice and flush with the, with the timber, which is how I want it. I'm gonna paint, paint the rest of it. Even though you're not gonna see the majority of it. And once again, I've recycled the King's um, wing kit. So just the timber out of that. This is all, both these wing kits, besides the quick grip. Well, actually, I've already had the quick grip in the shed. I already had the carpet in the shed. So the only thing I've had to go and buy for them has been the bits of angle that mounts them to the drawer. Um, so very cheap wing kits, really. You're lucky to be 50 bucks each. Beautiful. So there's one, done, on to the next one. Ah, celebratory B, because it's done. Let me show you. I've just got the back door shut because the sun was beaming in, hitting the fridge, heating the outside of the fridge up. But here you go, you've got the black carpet there, there's the back of the switch. A little bit messy, I've got to tuck that wire away, but nice and neat. And then you've got the rest of it there, so I'll open the, the door and we'll get a better look. There you go. I even fluked it and got that basically the same height. A complete, total fluke. Um, not a big fan of this here. I couldn't do too much about it just because I wanted to have the shelf this shelf here I wanted to have it sitting on top of this box just for extra strength so I could have carpeted it but I've just done it like that um, but yeah so inverters on which is beautiful so now I'll have I'm thinking I may even make I don't know if you can see because that's sun I'll jump in I'll jump in I'm thinking I might make so you've got here the shelf and then like a gap there for the air for the inverter and then the rest of the wing I'm thinking I might make a bit of a wall here sort of thing because um, this is where I'll charge batteries and stuff um, just so they don't slide off but we'll see how they go because I'll have the other fridge here um, so that should act as a wall in itself so but yeah very happy once again nice small a little bit more uh, usage of space. Now I can't put anything underneath this one because all my 12 volts under there, all the cables and wiring and inverter and everything's under them. Um, so yeah, I can't put store stuff like on this side, um, but that's okay. So yeah, quite happy. It's um, turned out very good. I've just thrown in the Milwaukee charger. You can see the light there is green. So it's charging with the power board with the switches. Um, so yes, we have we have 240 volt power charging. It'll be charging Milwaukee batteries. It'll be charging UE Boom because I've got a UE Mega Boom. Um, so it only takes 240. I don't know. You probably could bugger around and put a USB um, on the charger, but I've just done this. That way I've got 240 if I ever need it for anything else. Um, and drone actually charges off USB because I've got a mini. Um, I was under the impression that drones drone batteries charged with 240 but anywho um 
but yeah so now i've got 240 to charge stuff uh don't know what else i'll use 500 watt isn't much but anyway so i'm happy milwaukee batteries are charging ue boom can charge um and yeah happy days all right thanks for watching guys i'm gonna wrap it up there uh, i've got a heap of other stuff to go on and keep building and filming uh for other episodes so i hope you've enjoyed this one um with the wing kits and everything so it's come up pretty sweet i'm very happy with how it's going um i thought i'd better tell you and let you know too that uh, we've just purchased another car um for the both of us i'm gonna do a build on it but it's probably gonna be on our j and g channel because it's gonna be more related to what that's about um so if you're interested in that um i won't give too much away but it's a little two-wheel drive ute and some of you might be thinking what do you mean you're gonna build that so who knows, you'll have to head over and have a look. Um, I'll drop links and stuff below uh, for when it drops and all, all of that. Um, but yeah, that wraps it up for episode eight. Uh, stick around for episode nine, it's gonna be out very shortly. Uh, it's a little bit spicy, so I hope you're excited. Cheers, guys.